All right, Hans Temmistow, FlightHype.com here with Kenny Bayless, man. Hall of Fame ref. Kenny doesn't do interviews like that, so I'm just really excited to have him on here. Like, this is probably the most excited I've been for an interview, so <laughs> how you feeling, man? I'm doing great, doing great, Hans. How's, uh, how's retirement life treating you, man? Uh, so far, so good. I, I I've been getting quite a few uh, uh, podcasts like like this, these Zoom calls, which uh, has been fun uh, because the the key thing for me is, is is sharing, and I like to share and and uh, the the questions that that I've been asked give me that opportunity to do that. For sure, a hundred percent, man. All right, so there's, I mean, there's a lot to talk about, <clears throat> but um. I wanted to ask you some of the like more some of the more like current stuff, <clears throat> like in terms of um, just going to jump right, right into it and talk about obviously a guy that you know very well and Tony Weeks. Um, he's been getting like a lot of, you know, criticism for some of his stoppages, um, the stoppage that he had for um, Virgil Ortiz Jr. versus Frederick Lawson. And then the other one was Roley versus Barrasso. Um, what are your whole thoughts on it? Is it kind of hard to critique him because you've been in it for so long, or what are kind of kind of some of your thoughts on it? Man? Well, I'll tell you this, Hans. When when we do our seminars, our, our seminars uh, for referees are base basically to uh, uh, to make us better to 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 cover grounds of things that may have happened to one referee that may not have happened to another referee. And um, uh, in our seminars, um, um, fighter safety is the first thing that we discuss is fighter safety. And um, because, uh, you know, us referees, we have these fighters lives in our hand and, and, um, uh, the, the the question for the fans I know is uh, when we stop a fight, you know, why, what was the purpose? Um, and uh, it, safety is the purpose for us. And we are taught that it's better to stop a fight too soon than to stop it too late. Because a, a, a fighter's career is actually on the line. And if we let it go too long, then that could be very harmful to the fighter that's receiving the punishment. So, so we, we, you know, this part of our job is, is probably the most difficult. And, and um, for, for Tony, uh, I know that, that, uh, uh, in in the you know controversial calls uh, stoppages that he's had in the past, it has been because of safety. Um, 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 now, could he have let it go maybe a punch or two longer? Yes, but that's his call. He he has to make that 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 judgmental call because uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, and, and and it has happened to me, Hans, where a fighter got hit with a punch, and it, he never got back up again. And it wasn't because I let him take too much. It was just that he just got hit with the right punch. And and um, uh, yeah, it's 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 a tough call. Um, uh, us referees have to live with that decision when we make that decision. Um, we only have seconds upon seconds to make that decision. And um, um, our physical ability, ability to be in the right spot at the right time plays a, 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 a big part in that. Um, what uh, we would do uh, in the seminars that I mentioned is take scenarios like that and go over them, critique them, uh, not to be hard on Tony or any other referee that, that, that had a stoppage that way, but to learn from it.
And if we can learn from it, then it can make us a better official. Have you had one of those situations where, or can you remember a specific situation where um, a fighter took too much of a beating and, you know, it kind of like maybe scarred you a little bit and made you uh, maybe a little bit quicker on the trigger? Because if, you know, um, when, for example, with Tony, when he, when he makes some of these quote unquote really quick stoppages, a lot of people will kind of look back at the fight that was, um, Um, Marcus Brown versus um, ch -ch -ch. man, I forgot the guy's name. The cruiserweight. Um, and he had like the big cut, like right down the middle, um, right down the middle of his forehead, and he was bleeding everywhere. But Tony, you know, he allowed the fight to continue. So, if there like a specific fight that you can remember from your career where you were just like, damn, I let that man just take too much of a beating. Like, what fight was that? Well, um, I, I can't recall of a fight that I did where I let a fighter. And, and the fighter's name was Badu Jack. Just remember that, Badu Jack. But go ahead. Yeah, I, I was there that night yeah, but on, on that fight with uh, Badu Jack. And, and yeah, that was probably one of the worst cuts uh, that I had ever witnessed. Um, the, the, the reason why that fight continued was because the bleeding was not bleeding into the fighter's eye. The, the blood was running right down through the center of his forehead. Um, uh, there was no blood going into the eye. So uh, even after letting the fight doctor look at it, the, vi the fight doctor couldn't uh, uh, re re respond to Tony with a, uh, you know, stop the fight because there was no danger there. There was no blood going into the eye. So uh, though the cut looked ugly, uh, 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 Badu Jack was able to fight and defend himself. So with that being said, they let the fight continue. Um, uh, uh, us referees are in a unique uh, position when it comes to if we feel that our fighter is taking a beating uh, because we can always call in on the fight doctor. A fight doctor between rounds can get in the ring. He can uh, uh, look at the fighter, make an assessment. And if he feels that the fighter is taking too much, uh, he can advise us to stop it. Or if it, at any given time of the fight, if I feel that the fighter is taking uh, too much beating during the round, I can stop it. So uh, again, it's all about safety to the fighters, and we do um, uh, the, you know the, the 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 best we can with with the tools we're given to make sure that at the end of the the day, at the end of the fight, that that, that fighter is is capable of uh, continuing on with his career. When and this is kind of like a two part question for you. Um, because I don't believe I've ever heard anything like this. So you can tell me, I mean, you would obviously know, but Tony on his, um, on his Facebook, he was just like, um, Frederick Lawson, the guy who fought Virgil Ortiz, he wasn't cleared medically by like two doctors. And then a third doctor came in, um, cleared him. Um, the first two doctors said they saw like a brain aneurysm. Third doctor said they didn't see anything. He was good to go. Let him go fight. Now, Tony was just like, you know, in the back of his mind, even though the guy was cleared to fight, he was looking at it from the standpoint of the other two doctors were saying that, all right, he has like this medical issue. So that's why he like jumped in and stopped it really quick. So first question would be, have you ever seen something like that where like more like one doctor would be like, nah, this guy's not good. Then another doctor will come in and say, this guy is okay. And if you have seen something that'll make you a little weary, maybe a guy's age or, you know, something that you'll see in the scans, have you ever been like, uh, he's doing okay, but I remember the scans. Let me jump in and save him. Um, uh, uh, this situation uh, that Tony described in regards to uh, these tests, these aneurysm tests, is is a first to my knowledge. Uh, in 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 my thirty two years of of refereeing, uh, I, I've never heard from either. 
in another state or in the state of Nevada or anywhere around the world where um, there were tests being performed that came back positive first and then a, a continued test was done that came back negative and and then the fight uh you know, was sanctioned and, and the fight took place. I've never heard of it. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know all the circumstances. Uh, so it's, yeah, I, I, I can't comment on it because I don't, I don't know the, all the details. That's fair. Um, let me get your thoughts on, um, cause Errol Spence just recently came out and said like, you know, he just, underwent like his um, cataract surgery for like his eyes and things like that um just from like your standpoint like and i know you're not a doctor <laughs> but are do are are things like that would, would something like that make you sit back and say like okay i know he said he just got this surgery but going forward that could be an issue for spence or, or anything like that like can you kind of like shed some light, like, uh, I know he said he's going to be okay, and I'm sure he will be, but this could be a little bit of an issue for him going down the line. Well, um, uh, there was a fighter, which you probably are, are probably is aware of, uh, uh, fought back in the uh, the the 80s uh, by the name of Sugar Ray Leonard. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sugar Ray Leonard... Um, at at one point had uh issues with with I can't remember was his left eye or his right eye. Mm -hmm. But he, he he had surgery on it and he retired. And then after a couple of years he apparently had his eye checked out and he was cleared to fight. Yeah. And uh that next fight that he took after being cleared, if I'm correct, was Marvin Hagler. And um, he fought well. The fight was a split decision, and Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Leonard won. Um, um, I'm sure that the doctor that cleared him would not have cleared him if he knew 100% that his eye was going to be okay. Um, and and so he, you know, he he was cleared by the doctor, and and uh, and when doc when fighters get to to Nevada, one of the things that they do prior uh, to climbing in the ring is they 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 get looked over by our commission doctors. So uh, yeah, that 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 happens, but again, I. I it, it's happened with the issue of 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 an eye, but I I've never uh, uh, heard it um, something of that nature uh, happening with a with an aneurysm. Fair point. So I guess just from like your standpoint, I guess you would kind of say like yes, he did have this surgery, um, but if he gets into like if he gets like the Crawford rematch or if he fights someone else. You're assuming that, hey, Spence is going to be 100% from that standpoint, like his eyes, because they're not going to let him fight if his eyes aren't okay. They're not going to let him fight. And for a referee to, to have that on his mind when he uh, climbs in the ring, I'm not going to doubt that, that it, it could be, because, again, we're, we're looking out for the safety of the fighter. Uh, if the If the... If the cataract surgery or, or whatever issues he's had with his eye was his right eye, and and his opponent is throwing a, a left hooks connecting with the right eye, and I felt that the right eye wasn't functioning properly, uh, I would have the right to stop it if I, I felt that I needed to, or the doctor as well. Yeah. Um, but again, that's a, a situation where. Uh, you know, us us referees are always uh, thinking and looking at safety first. For sure. Now, I have to ask you because, you know, you have a poker face like, you know, a lot of referees do. You know, you're just like, okay, you're watching the fight. Make sure everything's okay. But have you 
what fight, if you can name it, or I'm sure pretty sure it's a couple fights, that you either refed or watched on the sidelines and you was just like, it's gonna be a good fight, man. And then the fight happened and you're just like, yo, why is this fight so one-sided? Like, have you ever been in like a referee fight when you was just like, man, I thought this was gonna be a good fight. This guy is whooping <laughs> this guy <laughs> a lot worse than anybody could have imagined. Yeah, there, 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 there has been several fights uh, over the years um, where, when they match two fighters up, even undefeated fighters, and and uh, uh, one one fighter come out on top, big, not small, but big. Uh, uh, a fight that comes to mind is a, a fighter by the name of, of Michael Nunn. Uh, uh, back in the day, uh, f fought this kid. They were both undefeated, mm -hmm. and and uh, Michael Nunn. I think the fighter name was Colum Bay, but Michael Nunn knocked him out. I think it was the second, first or second round, mm -hmm. and, and and one would have not have guessed that because both were undefeated. They had fought tough fights during their careers, and then to have one fighter get knocked out in the first round. Uh, was kind of a a, a shocker to, to to every to everyone, but but uh, but those things happen. I mean, uh, uh, um, you know, sometimes uh, it, it it takes one shot at the right spot uh, to 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 take a fighter out. We, we as referees, we just got to be prepared and respond uh, 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 in a way that's. Uh, it's fitting and, and show safety for the fighter. When you look at like, because, you know, if we go to like more modern time, because I mean, I remember the Michael Nunn fight. I'm not sure how many people will. But, you know, like if we go to like more modern, you look at like Spence versus the Crawford, both pound for pound guys. And Crawford just makes it look like he's in a league of his own that night. Now, when you look at that fight, there's a part of you kind of say like, Crawford is great, and I know it, but something just doesn't seem right with Spence or just in, like, any other type of fight where you just, like, man, both of these fighters are great, like, pound for pound worthy, but this guy doesn't look right. Like, something has to be off. Like, do you ever did you ever think about that with the Spence versus Crawford thing, or are you just like, nah, Crawford was just, he was just on the money, <laughs> Well, we we take uh, everything uh, in con consideration. Um, you know, fighters today, because of technology, uh, we, uh, we have uh, the ability to study uh, quite a few fighters. Because if you miss the fight when it was aired, you got YouTube you can go to and 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 watch it. Yeah. And um, do us referees look back at old fights? in preparing us for a fighter that we may be refereeing. Yes, I've I've done it. Not only have I done it, uh, um, 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 we're in a unique situation where we're following these guys' careers. Uh, uh, Shucks, I, I can't begin to tell you the number of fighters, uh, the, the uh, careers that I follow from the, the day they to, uh, turn professional uh, to the day they re retired, and be because of that, um, um, I, I I take in account everything that I have learned about that fighter during his time uh, in the ring. So if if there's a fighter that during his career that appeared to me that that uh, he doesn't follow the ring rules or he could be a little dirty. And or how well does he respond to the referee when the referee gives him commands? I I I, I take that in, into account uh, so that in the event that I'm refereeing him, uh, how I'm going to uh, uh, adjust the things that I do to get him to 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 listen to my command. So uh, is it kind of like a a, a a step up for us? Yes. I have the ability to to look at YouTube vi a video at a particular fighter because I'm going to be officiating his fight, and 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 I want him to to, to fight his best fight with without any uh, 
uh, uh, controversy or, or or issues that that uh, that may take place during the fight. So, so yeah, yeah, it's all in preparation. We have to prepare ourselves. Who would you say? And I know this is tough, but who would you say the best fighter you've ever refereed? Like you're just like, oh my gosh, this guy right here, like in his prime. You don't got to count like maybe his later years when he like maybe fell off, but in his prime, like, oh my goodness, this this dude right here. Well, you know, I go as far back as Muhammad Ali, and and for me, <laughs> Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, doing his era, uh, uh, I saw as as the best. Now, you know, as his career continued. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 you know, he, he developed uh, or not developed, but he had a few losses in his career. Um, but because there is a lot of uh, undefeated uh, uh, fighters that that uh, that got in and got out, and you can easily consider uh, them as is uh, your per se uh, a great fighter. Um, um, and there are a few uh, under, uh, uh, undefeated uh, uh, fighters out there, from Floyd Mayweather to Andre Ward to Ricardo Lopez uh, uh, and more that have uh, retired from the sport undefeated and uh, without a loss on their record. And uh, could you consider uh, any one of them? Sure you could. But uh, for me, it's it's the era and time, because you can go back even further and say a guy like Sugar Ray Robinson, that at one point in his career had over 80 wins and no losses, <laughs> but that was the era back then, yeah. uh, uh, to have 80 wins or, or and no losses. And if you want to go back further than then, uh, you, you can talk about uh, Rocky Mastriano, you can talk about Joe Lewis. You could even talk about Jack Johnson. So it just depends upon the era that you grew up in and what you had the privilege to see with your own eyes uh, dictates uh, uh, who one's best is. Uh, and, and for me, uh, I, I think Michael Jordan said it when they keep saying that he's the GOAT, he's the best. And he said, I, I can't measure myself to Will Chamberlain and to Bill Russell and, and guys like that. Uh, because, you know, they played basketball in a, a different era, and the era that they played in, they were the best. Yeah. Yeah. How, how great was Floyd Mayweather, man? You've seen him up close. And when I I've talked to a bunch of fighters that have fought him, and they always say stuff like, he was so aware of everything. He was so fast. Defense was always on point. Hit harder than you thought. But just from your eyes, like what made Floyd so just so damn great? He was a student of the game, um, and and um, you know I I used to tell people um, if you went to Webster's Dictionary and looked up the word boxing, one of the definitions under the word boxing would be the art of self-defense. And, and, and there should probably be a picture of Floyd in that section as well, because in the sport of boxing, first you dodge the punch and then you retaliate. And no one does it better than him. He has the art of slipping a punch and then retaliating. So you can't hit me, but I can hit you. <laughs> yeah. And he does it better than than in in my better than anybody uh, uh, in, in in the game. Now there are some young bloods that are coming up. Uh, if you went back in history, you could talk about Pennell Whitaker, yeah. who was a defensive fighter, you know, and and you you can't knock him for his style because, like I said, if you looked up the word boxing in the dictionary, it would say the art of self-defense. And Pennell Whitaker, 
was perfect when it came to bat. And if you wanted to go back further than that, uh, you could find other fighters in their different eras and the time that they fought and 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 uh, they would uh, be a, a perfect example of the definition of boxing. They had the art of self-defense.